Hello. Today I'll be showing how to use Autodesk's Fusion 360 software with the Evo 1 CNC machine. First we'll connect the USB, e-stop, and optional touch plate cables. Next we'll open up Fusion 360 and start creating a model. Once you select the sketch shape, apply it to the desired plane. In this case, the X plane. You can either drag it to the snap lines or directly enter the value. Now I'm going to extrude the shape. You can either press the E hotkey or press the icon in the upper left. And again, you can enter the value directly or drag it. Now when I create a new sketch, I can just click on the surface that I I've just made. Now I'm using the L hotkey to create a line. To end the line segment, just press the escape key. You'll have to complete the shapes in order for them to be extruded later on. Now I just have to delete the lines and extrude the eyes and mouth. As you can see, the sketch disappeared when we used the extrude command. To get it back, just click on the sketches and click the bulb icon on the current sketch. And again, using the E hotkey to extrude. Now that we have the model complete, we'll be switching to the cam to create the toolpath. The first thing we need to do is create a new setup. This tells the machine where the model will be. Before the machine knows where the model will be, we have to know what the size of the stock we're milling out. Now that we have the stock dimensions, we'll need to enter that into Fusion 360. As you can tell, the model is considerably smaller than the stock size. We'll begin by setting the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the machine. Z is the up and down axis which wants to point up, X is the right and left axis which wants to point right, and Y is the front to back axis which wants to go towards the back of the machine. In this case we'll use the box point on the upper left point of the stock. You may have noticed by now that the model is in the center of the stock. This is not ideal for milling. <laughs> In the stock settings, you can move the model in the X axis, the Y axis, or in the Z axis. We'll be using the Z axis. By setting this to zero, the model will move to the very top of the stock. Before we start milling, we'll have to know what we're milling with. 
This is a 4mm end mill with a 4mm shaft. That means the cutting head is 4mm wide and the cutting shaft is that. The length of the cut is approximately 12mm. Now we'll go to the tool library to add the tool that we just measured. Since I've already added this tool, I'll just show you the settings for it. In the feed and speed tab, I typically keep the spindle speed somewhere between 10,000 to 20,000 RPM. I usually start out with a cutting feed rate of around 40 millimeters per minute and work my way up depending on the material I'm cutting. Now to the cutter tab where we'll define the specifications for the bit. The bit type we're adding is a one flute flat end mill. This is opposed to something like a chamfer bit or a thread mill. As mentioned before, both the diameter of the cutting edge and shaft are 4 millimeters. The flute length is 12 millimeters and the shuttle length is just a few millimeters longer than that. The body length is 45 millimeters and so is the overall length as it is not including the holder here. Now that we have our bit created, we'll go back to CAM and create a toolpath for it. We'll start out with a 2D adaptive clearing. This will remove everything but the model in the area that you've selected. In this case, I've chosen the face of the model. Now we have to select the bit to use. I typically add a little bit to the top height and subtract some from the bottom height where applicable to ensure that the bit is milling all the way through. As you can see, the path does not connect with the other set. This is because there is stock that is being left. In addition, we can't just mill all of it in one go, so we'll want to do multiple depths. I've set each layer to be 0.5 millimeters, and removed stock to leave so that the bit will go directly against the features. Now I'll check the toolpath by pressing the simulate button. If the simulation looks good, we can go ahead and start the post processing. If this is the first time setting up your Evo, you'll want to check to make sure that the used G28 is off and that the source is generic post and generic GRBL for the post processing. After pressing OK, we'll be asked to save the G code NC file. And I'll just save that to the desktop for now. Now we'll open up the G code file in Cree Move and under the uh, File Mode tab, press Open and click that file. And before running that file, we'll want to make sure we get the stock set up in the correct position and the machine zeroed in. Now we'll put that 4mm bit into the 4mm collet and we'll attach that to the spindle. Now we'll use some wrenches to tighten that up.
Now in the Cree Move software, we'll want to put the spindle so that the fit lines up exactly with the location of the stock box point in Fusion 360. I just keep lowering the step size as the bit gets closer to the stock box point. As you can see, a step size of 0.1 millimeters is quite small. Now that the bit is at the stock box point, I'll reset all zero. The machine is now correctly orientated with the stock. Now I'll just move the spindle up 10 millimeters so when the spindle starts moving, it won't drag across the surface or spin up into the wood. Normally the spindle will come on automatically when you press the start button. However, since upgrading the spindle, I now control that manually. I could probably bump up the speed quite a bit, but it's always best to start slow and work your way up. Now we'll need to do another cam operation to create the 2D contour around the outside edge. One thing to check for is to make sure that the red arrow is on the right side as opposed to milling out the middle. After selecting the geometry, just make sure that the tool is the correct one and that the speeds are correct. Then go and add the multiple depths so that the bit doesn't go all the way through all at once. Also, on your sideways compensation, you may want to change the climb milling selection to conventional milling. Climb milling is, leaves a better finish, but conventional milling actually is easier on the machine. Now that we have a toolpath, we'll post process it and send it off to the Cree Move software. And since the machine is still zeroed in, uh, all we have to do is press the start button.
And it's finished. Feel free to post any suggestions for future episodes or ask a question in the comments below. Thanks for watching.